Good morning, Rich Palswick here from the Business News, just dropping by in Egg Harbor. Today I am at Hatch Distilling Company, and I'm here with... Chris Radel. Chris, uh, you are the owner along with your wife, Emily. Correct. Can you tell me a little bit of the story about how you got started, when you got started, and how you got started? Absolutely. So we, I started in uh, the poultry industry, uh, growing eggs and hens for um, large markets, mainly um, further processing for McDonald's and large restaurants. That turned into a desk job and I was really interested in doing something that got me a little closer in relationship with agriculture. In daydreaming, I came up with the idea of a distillery and here we are today. So we landed in Egg Harbor and built the distillery and then kind of a play on words and a play on my past history, we started Hatch Distilling Company. And when did you officially start that? We opened to the public in 2018 in July. Okay, so just a little over five years. Right. So we have some barrels behind us. Can you kind of explain what's in here and the process of you know making this? Yeah, so everything that we make, we try to have a sense of place. And so we make a lineup of spirits from local grains, uh, local honey, and then local fruit. What you see behind us today is um, some barrels of whiskey that was made with rye, uh, barley and corn grown five miles away uh, by 3-H Farms. So all of our grain stays local. We bring it here, uh, ferment it, uh, distill it, and then it ages in brand new American oak barrels for typically a uh, minimum of three years. So what you see here today is uh, about a year old barrel aging and hopefully in the next three years it'll be turned into a bottle of whiskey. So you can divide this room into a cold side and a hot side. Uh, everything on this side of the room is temperature controlled and it's where we do all our fermentations. Uh, if we're making whiskey, for example, we'll do a fermentation where we take grain and mix it with hot water. We add yeast and the yeast converts the starchy sugar from the grain into alcohol. We'll take the 10% alcohol mixture and move it into our still, 500 gallons at a time. And what distillation is, is heating up that mixture and boiling off the alcohol. So alcohol evaporates at 172 degrees Fahrenheit, which is well before the 212 degrees boiling point of water. And we capture that alcohol vapor, recondense it, and turn it into liquid, and that's what makes our distilled spirits. Do you have any idea how many gallons a year you produce? Yeah, so we produce, it's tough to measure in gallons because everything uh, goes up and down in proof but I can tell you we produce around 150 barrels of whiskey a year, and then we do probably about the same uh, equivalent, so let's say 3,000 to 4,000 gallons of uh, spirits that don't require aging. You told me an interesting story about the gin, how it has to be sourced from juniper berries. Yep. So talk about that story a little bit. Yeah, that's a great one. So what's really neat about gin is that um, it ha it's required to be flavored by juniper berry. Juniper berry happens to be native to Wisconsin, so the common juniper grows throughout the North Woods. And we go out and forage for those local juniper berries ourselves and fight off the mosquitoes in the fall to, to get those. Juniper berry has that flavor that you think of when you've thought of a bad experience with gin and you think of that pine tree kind of sure. flavor. Um, juniper is an evergreen and um, it's the predominant flavor in gin. Have you done that this fall yet or will you be getting out there? Nope, it's been done a little bit this fall, but they're just turning ripe now, so we'll be going getting after them soon. And I sound like I'm taking the credit for all that hard work. Our distiller, Caleb, does most of that work sure. with his dog, Juno. Okay. Oh, with his dog, Juno, yeah. funny. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Is that a ski? Our retired ski, which is our prodding stick. Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Fermentation gives off CO2, so don't stick your head too far in there or oh. it'll take the wind out of here. Yeah, wow. But you can see the you can see the yeast working. I on can, that yeah, you can see it bubbling. Huh. Now what's in here, Chris? So that's a bourbon mash. So that's okay. uh, sixty-five percent corn and the rest is rye. Yeah, you can definitely it has a really uh, a nice uh, smell to it and definitely and how long will it be in here? So it'll ferment for around four to five days. Okay. And, and then it goes into the still. Sure. We turn it into whiskey and then it sits in the barrel for three to four years. Right, wow.
and one more. Good. And then just roll the bottle with your hand. There you go. Oh. Nope. That's okay if that, that happens. Didn't, yeah. So we'll drop this down and all we're gonna do is just peel it off that way. Okay. So I went a little too far? A little too far, but okay. it's still a usable label. Okay. And it looks good. Oh, let's see it. Okay. Now, like you said, everything is locally sourced here. That's what we're about. Everything we make has a sense of place. Um, most of our products are sourced from within a five mile radius of the distillery. Awesome. And that you also talked about having a wine side of the business as well. So uh, can you talk about what we see here? Yeah, we do. We have a, a wine and mead side of the business. So mead is wine made from honey. Uh, I'm also a beekeeper and that's kind of a differentiator for us. We work uh, with another local Wisconsin beekeeper and we do a lot of products from honey. I keep around 20 to 50 hives each year. That doesn't produce enough honey to supply what we need here for the distillery, so we work with uh, Stevens Point Beekeeper um, that supplies us with the rest of the honey. And I saw on the website you have been stung. Yes, people ask, uh, you know, do you get stung? Yes, I do. Um, it's, it's part of beekeeping, but I can tell you, you build up a tolerance to it. Sure. Now, you also had told me uh, prior to us talking that today would not be a good day to go visit the bees. Today would not be a good day to go visit bees because they um, are a little moody when the weather gets bad, like some people we know. Sure, sure. Yeah, so it's best to visit bees when the weather is great. I think that's great, Chris. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I ended my day by traversing all over Door County in search of the elusive juniper berry, but maybe I just wasn't looking in the right spot. I'd like to thank Chris and staff from Hatch Distilling in Egg Harbor for showing me the ropes when it comes to producing spirits. Until next time, Rich Palswick from the Business News signing off. As always, thanks for watching. Just dropping. Bye.